Once upon a time, there was a boy who usually stole wallets, and his name was Zog. He was a skinny kid with brown hair whose clothes were tired and torn by hard labor. Then one day, while he was in mid-theft, he heard a mystical voice whisper, Come meet me in town square. I will help you escape your misery. Zar pondered for some time, but he had accidentally left his hand in the pocket he was about to steal from. The owner of the pocket was not happy when he looked behind him. Blimey, a thief! Ring up the jailer! shouted the owner of the pocket. With a sigh of displeasure, Zar ran through town square, down an alley, to a tavern, down the cellar stairs, and was safe. Then he heard a growl to his left. Hello, Fang, said Zar with a sigh. Well, what did you bring me today, worm? asked Mr. Scabs with a growl just like Fang. Without warning, a loud thud came from outside. Suddenly, the earth trembled, and the ceiling came down with a crash, and Zar and Mr. Scabs were buried with rubble. Zar picked his way out of the debris, but Mr. Scabs was not so lucky. Zar ran up the cellar stairs, or what was left of them. Soon, he was out of the rubble, and he headed to Town Square. He ran as fast as he could and got there in about three minutes. Then, to his astonishment, he heard, he saw a man in the middle of Town Square, and the man spoke to him and said, Come with me, and I'll help you find your family. I know you must be thinking, why me? But I will tell you in due time. In the meantime, we must make, our, make haste. We do not have much time. Come with me, said the strange man, as he took Zar's hand, and they disappeared in a cloud of mist and they were transported to the world of the Lost Woods, where Zar trained to find his family. Then one day, Zar was in the middle of training when he, when he busted his mentor, the man who had met, he had met in the, in the town square. He, one day, he told Zar, I think it's time for you to find your family. You look ready. So Zar set out to find his family. As he traveled through the woods of fire, he saw up a goblin. You shall not go any farther. These are my woods, child. You, shall, you will not make it out of these woods alive. But Zar did not listen to the goblin. He just ran past it. But luckily for Zar, this goblin was fat and lazy, but normally they are skinny and fast. At, but Zar was very lucky and he ran past without, with no problem and made out of the woods a fire with ease. As he ran to the tree line, he saw Chipmunk family, family gathering nuts for the winter. And Zar thought to himself, soon I'll be a part of a family. And with that, he ran out of the woods of fire and went east to the plains of wind, where he walked for hours at a time. When he heard a voice say, I'm tired of walking. I should not have to do it to my feet hurt. I'm thirsty. <laughs> Zar ran to the source of the sound, and he saw to his disbelief a little girl with blonde hair and blue eyes throwing a fit. There were tears in her eyes, and Zar could not help but feel sorry for her. So he walked up to the girl and helped and helped her get out of the flames of the wind. But the girl complained about being thirsty and tired. Soon they saw the edge of the of the planes of wind, and the girl ran fast away from Zar into a man's arms, and they left Zar with no, with no thanks or hugs. So Zar held, kept on his quest, but he could not shake off the feeling that he had been used by the little girl, and he walked away from them, onward to the mountains of metal. He hiked for a long time before he saw life. He saw a stone tassel moving and wobbling on its little legs, and to Zar, and to Zar, it was very fascinating, and he sat there for hours writing about the stone tassel in his journal. Soon he realized he had, that it had grown dark, and he leapt up, grabbing, he, but he grabbed the stone tassel and ran out of the mountain range and saw a light of a town. So he ran to the town and sat on the porch of a nearby house and the doors opened and in the doorway was a man and a woman and they looked at him with tears in their eyes in their eyes our son is that you have you come home after all these years we have missed you so much now our sadness is over and with that they embraced a long time ago they were separated but they have found each other the end hope you enjoyed